this scene uh, that between that that Dylan, my editor, has dubbed uh, Godzilla versus Mothra. I don't know, sort of acting styles. Philip Baker Hall versus <laughs> Burt Reynolds here, where Floyd Gondoli comes in and talks about the introduction of video. Is to me, it's funny. Uh, it's just the major, major sort of hook that once I latched into really kind of freed me up to write the movie. Um, the, my sort of sort of romantic uh, notions that um, back in the old days in the 70s when porno movies were shot on film as opposed to now when they're shot on video there was you know there's a major difference and first and foremost is just a technical difference um, when you're shooting on film it's more expensive you really have to concentrate and you have to focus and you have to think okay where am I gonna put the camera to tell this story well that's not even getting into the emotional factor which to me is, I look at the porno stars in the 70s and I think they could, they could draw a straighter line uh, between themselves and legitimate movie stars because they were both being shot on film. You know, they were both running at 24 frames a second being thrown up through light up onto a big white screen. And it was kind of uh, easier to think I'm a movie star. So in this business that's so degrading so quickly, you know, they could sort of hold on to a shred of their dignity thinking I'm, I'm a movie star. You know, but then when video came along, it just sort of ruined that, and it kind of created this assembly line mentality, which was, you know, it's five dollars a tape, just keep shooting, you know, like Ricky Jay's line, we'll shoot and shoot and shoot, and we'll figure it out later, you know, um, and that kind of mentality happened, and I think obviously the quality of the work went down, and look, you know, they're not movie stars anymore, they're video stars, not to mention that if you're a director, you're making your, your, your movie for an audience. And the market is what? The market is a, a VCR. The market is a guy at home who has a fast-forward button. You know, you do not have time for a plot. He has a fast-forward button. So it really kind of, you know, just stripped away any kind of, any version of dignity that might have been in the, in the business, in, in, in this stuff, in the 70s side of things, in the, in the porno industry at that time. You know, from people telling me, God, you've taught me this, and you've made And, you know, we shot this stuff... Um, really loose and really improvisational. I mean, it I did write it out, but what was great was that within the writing, I always knew, like, okay, if the documentary is just what I wrote, it'll be cool enough, but it's supposed to be a documentary. Let's just shoot a bunch of shit and figure it out later, which is the first time I've ever done that because I'm really kind of opposed to that kind of thinking, but we just shot tons and tons and tons of footage, and it was really fun to have a 16-millimeter camera on set all the time. We could always shoot footage for the documentary and just know, like, well, this will figure into the documentary somehow. Um, and as you see, it's paneled in here. You know, on the left and right, it's sort of black. And the sort of standard aspect ratio for for 16-millimeter stuff is either 133 or 166, you know, generally 133, as opposed to the 235 frame of CinemaScope. And I wanted to panel it in, you know, to kind of uh, show the difference there. Obviously, there's a difference in, in film stock, but, but also really show the aspect ratio difference to kind of size it down. And we really played a lot with the border that you see um, on the left and the right um, and the sort of getting the, the sort of fuzzy line there and not making it too straight. It was a really weird thing, and I don't even remember what we ended up with because we tried 166 and 133. 133 was too small for us for a little while, and then 166 was a little too big. We kind of made up our own kind of aspect ratio there and kind of ended up somewhere in the middle and kind of rounded the curves off, which I thought was interesting, and just kind of gave it, um, I don't know, a nice look. Um, that also felt um, kind of genuine and real, I think, I hope. I love the 16 millimeter stuff a lot. You know, when it comes to that stuff and they've got to get it up and they've got to cry and they've got to get emotional, it's a lot easier to just keep the camera rolling and reset back to one. There's a slow dolly in there, you know, so it starts in one position, kind of wider, it's a two shot, and it moves in close, uh, dolly in, a little dolly in towards, towards each of them. Is it's just a lot easier than calling cut and resetting back to one, and then everybody, and then the whole crew goes like this, and everybody moves around, blah, 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 to just go, we're doing one take. We're going to do 40 takes, or however many it takes, within this roll, but we're going to put a full mag in, which is 10 minutes long, and we're going to go. And we're going to reset back to one each time, and it's just a lot easier, because everybody stays quiet, and, and Julianne can just be in her thing, and whatever she's got to do. There's nothing I can say or do to work her into it. She knows what she has to do for the scene, and she's going to do whatever she can do. I'm terrible with, with having to take out scenes that I like, that I know aren't really good for the movie. Because I'm, I'm 
pretty egotistical and <laughs> generally in love with the actor who's doing it. And it's really my effort more to protect them than the story, where I usually fucked myself over by not taking the scene out that I know for the good of the movie should come out. But boy, is that actor good in what they're doing. Wow, look at that. If I've got that moment, you know, how can I lose that? But you really know at the end of the day what should come out. You really know in your, in your heart what should come out of the movie. And I, the scenes that I took out, the great thing is that I didn't have to take anything out. I didn't have to cut it down for time. I really got to just cut the best movie. That was the goal. It wasn't like, oh, it's too long. Or, you know, I gotta, if I make it this much shorter, we can get more shows per day or pressure from New Line. There's a little pressure, but ultimately they just kind of said, yeah, whatever, whatever's going to happen. And you just kind of just bite the bullet and take the stuff out that, you know, shouldn't be there, just really shouldn't be there. The hardest scene for me to take out was this scene between Nicole Parker, who plays Becky Barnett, and Michael Jace, her husband, the newlyweds, they get married and they go off and it sort of, it turns sour. It turns into this really violent relationship where, which, which I've heard about a million times in porno, where it's the guy meets the girl who's in porno. Uh, and he's real turned on and wow, baby, that's so fucking hot and my girlfriend's a porno actress. But then two weeks later, it's, you're a fucking whore. How could you do that? And he's beating her, you know? And that's a story you hear pre uh, pretty often, over and over again, and so that was what that story was showing, and it's sort of intercut with this, with, with her calling Dirk to come and save her, and he rushes out and gets in this car accident, and the vet, and all this shit, and it was the last thing I took out, and I held onto it forever, but essentially why I took it out was because it was just too much. The second half was sort of really punishing, and all this bad stuff was happening. And I think I was a different place. I was a different person from the year that I'd made the movie to the, the, the moment that it was coming out, was that, I don't know, maybe I kind of wanted to, to I had some kind of twisted thing that I, that, I, that I felt like all these characters had to be punished or something for, 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 for what they were doing in a weird way. Like, I, I had this weird uh, thing about making sure to take care of everyone and making sure that each story kind of went through some kind of dramatic, you know, uh, denouement, denouement uh, arc or punishment or something like that. I, I, I don't know what, you know. But I was really happy to have this sort of wonderful world of editing to go, you know, I want Becky to go off with a kiss, you know what I mean? And she, the last time we see her, she kisses her husband, and it's really nice to think that she can be happy, you know because God knows everybody else in this movie isn't going to be at the end, you know. Everyone's going to get two seconds of happiness, you know, then we're going to see that. But we all know what's going to happen after we walk out of the movie theater is that their lives are just going to be exactly the same as they were for the, for the, the two and a half hours that you were there, you know. Um, so I, I, I sure, I sh when, I, when I see the scenes that I cut out, I love them. And they're cool to me, and they're fun, and it's like, oh, those are great. But when I watch the movie, I sure don't miss them, you know? And the real reason, the real reason that I took out the scene with, with Becky and her husband was I sat, I was watching the movie, right before we were going to lock picture, I had a small screen with 20 people, and I know every fucking frame of this movie. Every frame. You just do. You're editing it, you're living with it, you're breathing it. And... That scene used to come between this court, the, the courtroom scene and Jack Horner walking through Horner Productions and the offices there. It used to come in the middle there of, of these, those two scenes. And as I would watch Jack, I said, whoa, this is great because I'm so excited because I get to watch the courtroom scene with Julianne. And I love watching the courtroom scene with Julianne. And then this other scene came up with Becky and Dirk going to save her. And I said, this is a sign that I know every frame of this movie, and suddenly I thought we were, uh, the natural flow of this movie was into the courtroom, was from Jack to Amber. You know, because the shot before we see Jack Horner in, in Horner Productions is Dirk doing a line of coke. And I guess I'd put those three people, the mother, son, and, you know, and, and, and father, all together. You know, that, that those needed to be, at this moment in time, crammed together. The shot of Dirk doing coke, Jack walking through Horner Productions, and then Amber in the courtroom needed to be tied one, two, three together. And Becky was just kind of getting in the way of the, the more immediate family, the real nuclear family. Like, the family is all these characters, but there's really four, four of them, and it's Dirk 
and it's Amber and it's Jack and it's Roller Girl and the nucleus has to sort of be concentrated on at this moment. So that's why I took it out because there was a moment where I didn't remember my own movie. And I said, well, if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. You know, I think there's the, uh, there's the, uh, the influences that are pretty clear, you know, I mean, I, certainly... In, it's funny because the influences for me are, you know, Jonathan Demme, Robert Altman, and Martin Scorsese as the, the three, as the three kind of filmmakers in America right now who are alive and who are working and who have a solid uh, body of work. I mean, those are the three guys that I, I really look up to. And, and it's funny because I, you know, um, there was a lot of people really excited about this movie and I was excited that I had people excited about this movie. And you know what? If people are going to be excited about my next movie because they saw Boogie Nights, fuck yeah. And that's going to make me raise my watermark and make me pay attention. It's not going to fuck me up, and I'm not going to really think about it a whole hell of a lot. But if anything, it's going to challenge me. I think, you know, if, if anything, there's a sort of notion that uh, the first the first two creative works that you present are come out of revenge for, for whatever happened to you in high school. <laughs> well, now it will be revenge that comes out of, you don't think I can do it again? Well, watch what I have up my sleeve, <laughs> you know? And it can come from that place, which is okay. You got to understand that in this world, there's a whole little political and sociological, you know, there's a hierarchy and there's, there's this kind of relationship and there's that kind of relationship and it's really kind of unique and wonderful to watch. Yeah, like the person who is in porno, who isn't, who's married to the person who isn't in porno or, uh, you know, whatever it is. And I have to say that, that that's the kind of stuff that I wanted to approach the movie with was like, I'm not going to, I don't want to approach the big, sociological picture of porno and the world, porno, porno versus the world. I want to think about Jack's house. What are the rules at that fucking house by that pool? You know what I mean? What are the people, who's relation, what's Buck's relationship like with Jack? What's Jack's relationship like to Amber? What's the little social structure of this house by this pool at this moment and go, that's our focus. Our focus is not the Supreme Court and what everyone else, you know, and, or the cops coming and knocking the door down. It's looking at the, from the front door of Jack's house to the back door. Like, that's what we should focus on and think about.